Hi, and welcome to Friday Talks, a weekly show where we talk about anything that comes to mind. As always, I hope you guys have had a nice week and a nice weekend. Mine was cool, although Wednesday was a terrible day. Work was just absolutely chaotic, and I had like severe anxiety that day for some reason, and I was out of breath, and I had to like leave uh, for a while and get some fresh air, because I was feeling really, really bad. And then it was just like a bunch of things that were going on with like customers and like for a day such as Wednesday, a day of the week, we got way too many customers, uh, especially for the number of employees that were working that day. But one thing that made Wednesday better, however, was towards the end of it, when I got home, I had this beauty waiting for me and I'm so excited. And we're gonna do, we're gonna open it today and, 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 and take a look at it. So Spyro, it's, Amazing and my favorite gaming series ever the PlayStation one was it's like No, no doubt just my favorite trilogy and I have played the entirety of the, the, the Spire series except for the Game Boy games and the Skylanders We don't talk about those, but I play pretty much every other game um, And if it's not obvious then uh, I am a massive Spyro fan, as you can uh, obviously tell. But I pre-ordered this in July, and it was out on the 31st of July, and at least for Europe, because it was released earlier in America. And I got it on Wednesday, but uh, so yesterday, so obviously I wasn't gonna just open it by myself. I mean, it, it's still sealed, as you can see. There's a plastic wrap and everything. So we're gonna do that together. I'm super excited. I got my Spyro plush right here with me. So he's gonna open it with us. I got my Spyro t-shirt for the occasion and all my Spyro stuff that is right there. Um, just, uh, they're all looking at us. Just, they're all very excited to open the Spyro art book, the Art of Spyro Reunited Trilogy, which um, is, was just, <laughs> A godsend. So let's do a thing here. Let, let's let's uh, first of all, obviously, uh, open the, the the art book of Spyro. Which I'm so excited for. Oh my god, we're opening Spyro's art book. I've been waiting for this moment for so long, and by so long I mean one day, if we count since the time we got here couple days, maybe two weeks since the time I ordered. It's so beautiful. I absolutely adore this art style. This art style right here, man, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love it so much. I have a wallpaper with this art style. Uh, and I, it's very inconvenient to move my camera right now, but I will just put a picture and you can see it. It's right there on the screen. So um, I'm going to put Spyro here. It's gonna be sitting here and share like that and we're gonna go through this together all right so let's open the first page oh my god dude oh it's beautiful look at how gorgeous this is do you see it of course you do you're looking at it this is beautiful look at it oh it's just sitting down like next to the portal and look there's like a, a dragon statue that i have to um, to free and there's balloon, which is how you travel through from world to world in Spyro One, and this is the artisan's home world. Oh man, that's so cool! I love this. It looks so pretty. Oh man, this is awesome. I'm so glad I ordered it. Oh look at it. Oh, I love it. Look at you. Oh. <laughs> look. Okay, I'm trying to like the light not shine on this. Oh, that's so cute. It's just painting on the on the dragon. Oh, I love this so much. Look at Spyro, looks adorable. Look at him. He's a cute. He's a cute boy. Next page. Let's go. Oh man, I love these. I love concept art so much. This is beautiful. This is from the um, Magic Crafters homeworld, I believe. There's one of the levels where you you have to like fly uh, to these platforms and then go over there and you start around here somewhere to this side. That's so cool. Oh my God. I really hope I don't rip any, oh, I love it. Look at Spartan. Look at how cute, look at his face. Look at his face. I'm so excited. And look at all the dragons flying. That's so cool. Do you see all of them? Oh man. We got Nastor. We got Boob over here, I think. Is that Booba? No, I don't think that's Booba. I don't actually see Boob over here. 
Nestor and Bubar are, are my two favorites. So I haven't actually played the remaster yet, and we, when I do, I'm going to play for the channel. But the reason I haven't played it, I have the I have the remaster trilogy for the PS4, even though I don't own a PS4, but I wanted to pre-order it out of excitement. I have it for the Switch and for Steam. The reason I haven't played it yet is because I want to play it with a really good friend of mine when I visit to Mer when I visit him in America. Uh, if that ever happens, because fucking virus, right? Oh man, look at Spider's face, it's so cute. Oh my god, so this was written by Mickey Nielsen, forward by Josh Nettleberg. Good job, guys. Whoa, look at this art style. It's like a comic book art style. That's so neat. Like, this is legit the first art book I've ever owned of anything. Like, really. This is so exciting to me, because I had never seen thing, anything like this. I love this art style, look at this. There's there's the, the Yeti, what's his name? I can't believe I forgot it. It's from, it's from the third game, from Year of the Dragon. There's Hunter, there's uh, Bianca, there's Elora, there's Agent Nine, there's a Professor, there's Sergeant Bird, there's the Thief. This is a pumpkin villain. It's the first the first boss in, uh, in Spyro 1. And there's a boss from the third Spyro, even though she's not green, she's blue. But he, she's green here. I don't actually know who this is. There's a level where these guys are like flying on balloons and you have to like pop them and everything. Uh, this is one of the bosses from the second game. A sidekick to, to Ripto. Nestor, I love Nestor so much. He looks amazing, he looks so awesome. There's moon and money bags, look at his face. Oh my God. I really like the expressions he has in this game. On the remaster, it's so funny. There's um, the kangaroo, Sheila. Sheila the kangaroo, and that's uh, that's Nasty Nork. Hell yeah. Hunter looks absolutely awesome in this game as well. Oh, and there's the other Ripto villain. Ripto is not actually here. I only see the villains for the first and third games. You'd think Ripto was, would be here as well. But hey, and there's Spyro. Oh, good boy. I love him. I love him so much. Oh, there's a lot to, to read. I'm not gonna read this for the video, obviously, because this is probably gonna be very big already just by looking at the art book. So I'm just, we're just gonna go through the art. Really, and then I'm gonna read these things in my own time. Look at this. Oh, this is the wallpaper. This is the wallpaper I showed you guys. It's on my paper, on my wall. That's so neat. No way. Look at this. This looks so neat. Look at this art. Look at this art, dude. Oh my God. You got an Astor? Man, I wish I, I had played this already so I could name all of them. Booba, Booba's here. It's so cool. Nasser though, man, like it's such, oh, I love him so much. And there's Nasty Nork. Oh, that's so neat. Look at Spyro with his cool ass cock expression. I love it. Dude, look at this dude, man. That's it's ripping. Holy crap. I, I seriously need to play this game and like just check. Oh, I love him so much. I love dragons, man. They're like fucking awesome. Oh, no way. Look, look at all this. Look at all these catches. Oh, I love looking at Spyro's. Spyro's special expressions. Oh, man. It's so neat. That's so neat. I love this one with the, with the sunglasses. I usually have like sunglasses on my Spyro apology just for the meme. Because of, because of the first game, how he has sunglasses as well. Look at all these sketches as well. And then just like poison ice, super flame, fireball. I love all these concepts. Look at it. So cool. Oh, here's in villains. So this is from, uh, that, that was ripped right there. There's this the Spyro pic picture. There's Sparks, look at him. Sparks looks super cute. Look how derpy his eyes look, I love it. <laughs> you're looking through the old models for visual cues, but you're also looking at everything else you can to get a hint of what might be a really good and faithful way to move it forward. Nicholas Cole. Yeah, so they obviously get inspiration from the, um, from the original uh, art and, and characters. There's a Laura, there's Hunter, that's so neat. Like the, this art style, this sh I love this shading so much. And it is like out, it's like lineless art. And there's Bianca and Sheila. There's the professor, all the sketches. There's Agent Nine as well. There's Sergeant Bird. Bentley, right, that's his name. I can't believe I forgot it. Anyone remember the on Spyro of the Dragon when you had to do the Bentley boxing stage? My God. That was so impossible. Or at least the original one was. I don't know how the other remastered is. Oh, it is the the Toasty, right? That's the first the first boss in Spyro 1. Toasty was the first boss that we reimagined and implemented. I felt like we took quite a risk with this design. We leaned into a darker, quirkier, edgier take on the character while still trying to retain the cartoony absurdity of the character. It was very well received and gave us a ton of confidence as we moved forward. Dude, it was a blast. Like the like 
they did such a great uh, work with the redesign of, of Toasty. I, I'm, I'm really glad they got the positive responses they did. And it's awesome because Toys for Bob actually listened a lot to the community. I remember when I first show Artisan's Homeworld and Nastor, initially Nastor was like, um, you know, like a turban and people didn't really like that because like it, it, didn't, it didn't fit the Artisan's Homeworld too much. And artisans looked very sunsetty, so like the grass was more yellowish. It was like sunsetish and everything. So it didn't really uh, look like the original ones. So then like they changed that because the community were like they they were asking to make things like a little more of a vivid green and to change Nestor as well. And Nestor and one up just looking absolutely blasting. So they made such a great job. So this is the Dr. Shemp. This is the um, second boss, if I recall correctly, from the first game, where he kind of like runs from platform to platform, then like slams this thing at you, and you have to flame his butt. Oh, it's Blowhard, yeah. So uh, Blowhard, now this just reminded me. Um, I played Spyro 1, the original for, for the channel, a couple of years back, I, didn't, I never finished it, but uh, I remember because of this, because I, I made a pun on the title of the video. <laughs> but go watch it if you want. I had a lot of fun. Especially Magic Crafters, that was my favorite homeworld. And I show you guys some of my favorite stuff, and there's a Ripto. See, I love this shading. I really want to get good or better at heart. And kind of use this shading because I really like it. So, Metal... Oh, it's Metalhead! That's who he is, okay. I remember now. That's also from the first game, yeah. There's so many pages to go. I'm sorry, this video is going to be super long, but like, I really... This is really important to me. And I just like really want to share this with every one of you. So this is Gulp and Crush, that's their names. I always forget their names, but they're also, they're, these are from Spyro 2. They're Ripto sidekicks. Also look super cool. Like I love, hey, anything that's dragon, uh, dinosaur-ish, reptile-ish, like I, I will probably love it. Like this is so cool to me. Crush and Gulp were great characters to reimagine. They need to be able to flip between silly comic relief and being terrifying threats. I remember the first time I saw the attack animations for Crush's boss fight. I couldn't believe how intimidating the animators made that lumpy purple guy. Hell yeah, that's so cool. Buzz, yeah, this is a guy from Spyro 2. He uh, plays, he's like the one that like rolls super fast and you have to like kind of throw him into the lava pit. Look at his art, man. Just look at the shading, all, all the highlights over here. It's so neat. So here's from Spyro 3 now. She's the boss for Spyro 3. Here of the dragon. Like we learned with Spyro, so much of the character is in the eyes. The sorceress concept has this great expression that we really wanted to replicate just right in 3D. I spent a lot of time with the 3D artist to get the size of her pupils, the thickness of the lashes, the colors, everything just right. Ooh, the dragons, we're gonna learn about the dragons and their names. Hell yeah, this is gonna be super fun. All right, let's try this setup instead, because it's a little bit easier for me. Like, my wrist is starting to hurt. Oh my god, yes! Oh, look at this! That's Nastor, a beautiful boy. Love him so much. My favorite. And there's Delbin. Once we decided to lean into giving the dragons all of this additional character and personality, it opened up this whole new problem set of what exactly each dragon's thing would be and why. We tried to take cues from their dialogue and location in the level whatever possible, but sometimes we just had fun with it. The very first round of ideation on the dragons was much simpler and faithful to the spirit of the original designs. Nick always has added such great details. Delbin introduces you to Sparks, so having him be this big honking painter with a portrait of Sparks Sparks on his he's on his easel was aces. Yeah, that's awesome. So this is the guy that introduced you to Sparks. He's sitting. Let me let me go down here as well. So he's sitting next to the lake with the little platforms to jump to make the, the switch to the puzzle for to open the little the first uh, speedway. So that's cool that he has like a little painting of him. That's so nice. That's so nice. There's Davlin. Oh, thanks. Yeah, he has. Um, I remember when we were still waiting for the game to come out. The Spyro Twitter page posted a GIF where this, uh, where Devlin was actually like wishing happy birthday to Spyro and giving him this cake. So that was pretty cool. Whoa, look at Magnus. I think if I recall correctly, Magnus is probably in the Dr. Shemp world or in the Dr. Shemp map where you fight him. Or, or that's Trondo, maybe that's Trondo. One of the two, it might be Trondo. Man, I have to play the game. Like I wish I would have played it already because like then I would know like which one of the gunner looks so neat, look at him. Oh my god, I love this so much. Enzo. Magic Crafters. There's Magic Craft. Magic Crafters is my favorite home world. Like it's just so nice. And it's mostly because of the little wizards that like when they when they when you get next like they have a trap for you and then they laugh at you and then if you get next to them they go like with their arms like up and suddenly just start screaming like Nyah! 
<laughs> and it's so funny. And I just love the, the music for it, the theme song for, for Magic Crafter is so nice. Man, I love art. I love creativity. Like, to me, it is so just beautiful and nice. Booba! And of course, Booba had to be from Beast Makers. So Beast Makers is the second home world. And there's Dreamweavers. But Dreamweavers is also fun. Aw, look at this one, it's so beautiful. Worth noting that I haven't seen every dragon. Like, I've seen things in the internet now and then from the Reunited trilogy, but I've never seen every dragon design. So like, a lot of this is a very, is a very big surprise to me. I'm just kind of skimming through, cause like, uh, I don't... <laughs> the video is so big already, Jesus Christ, I'm so sorry. So this is the guy from... from the, from the balloons that takes you to other homeworlds. Does have the Norks, that's right. I was trying to remember their name earlier. I, I still remember like their, their little sound when you approach them and they get all super scared and, and run away from you. And the, and the artisans homeworld. Nork Musketeers. Right, these are the guys from Peacekeepers. Oh man, this is from the Metalhead. Uh, from the Metalhead level. That's Gunners, Nork Dudes, Larry Norks, Laser Norks. <laughs> Nork Dudes, that's funny. Nork Commandos, Nork Survivalists, Nork Gunners. Yeah, they had to censor the freaking bullets. This is towards the end, towards like the last levels. They had to censor the bullets and just put like purple dye. It's kind of sad, but it's like just a nitpick sort of thing. The gem thieves, there's one of these right at the first, right at the beginning in Homeworld, in the Horizons Homeworld. Green and Hell the Wizards, I remember these, you throw like little lightning bolts at you, the hack thieves. Whoa, I've never actually seen their mouths. Because in the first game, like you can only see their eyes. <laughs> To this day, when I'm drawing, I leave on long plays of Spyro and all those 90s games, mostly to keep myself motivated. Yes, I do the same. I love listening to 90s music uh, from like video games and stuff. See, this, this, the sleeping dogs. These are the dogs from Dosi's level where you fight them just before. Fools. I sort of remember these. Druid, dru druids. These are these are the druids. These are the guys that go like, uh, like ah, ah, with, with their arms. It's really funny. The druids are awesome. They're probably my favorite NPC. And it's really funny because I didn't know the names for most of these. I never knew. These are the guys from the treetops levels. They do the walk with their with their hands. Spire 2, Ripto's Rages, Money Bags. Ah, the silly dude we all love to hate. Am I right? <laughs> Bombo, I hated this guy because he threw things at you and it was hard to, to dodge them. Jam cutters, the guys are so cute. Breeze builders, right? These birds, I remember these. Land blubbers, right? Oh, I love, no, this level is really funny. Oh uh, yeah, I remember this. The private Romeo, this is really cool. I love this this little quest thing. The alchemist, satyrs. Oh, you had to help this dude. You had to escort this dude uh, and like, um, you had to ram into those big ass rock dudes so they wouldn't hurt him. Oh yeah, these these are from the level. So this is actually, I think, inspired Ra on Ratchet and Clank. I've seen that around, but I, I love this level because this is the level where you have to like get these little balls and then put them in the um, in the little thingies to to deactivate or activate the things to the electricity thing of Jake's power. And then you have to like you have this mini game where you have to to keep these dudes from stealing the the energy balls. And I love that. Lava lizards, they're so cool. Look at them. Oh man. Yeah, I think these are the big dudes I was talking about that you have to escort the other dude from. Agent Zero, this fucking cunt. Oh man, I love it. Cause he had this mini game where he had to play hide and seek with him. He, he would always catch you. Like, my God, <laughs> it was so easy to get caught and like, it would be annoying, but in a funny way. And George, so adorable. I didn't actually know his name. I didn't, I didn't remember, but this is the guy that uh, when you're in the snow levels with the, um, this the Eskimos, you have to like take him to 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 eat fish or something like that, and it's really cute. And his Andal and Greta, oh, it's so cool. I love these guys. They show up a lot of times, especially like in the in the level with the ninjas, the fireworks factory, and they they show up there as as ninjas and do these cool ass moves. It's really funny. Sunny Beach Turtles. This uh, this is from level where you had to like, you had a lot of mini games with turtles, and it was really cool. I, I remember one where you had to like prevent them from falling into a cauldron. And, and being cooked. <laughs> Capybaras. Oh, these fucking farmers, dude. This level was awesome. There was some bees that were super annoying. My God. Footer. Oh, so this is basically the things that give you butterflies to feed sparks. Oh, look at his little lizards. They're so cute. <laughs> look at him. Oh, that's adorable. I love this so much. Spyro, here of the dragon. And that's the third game. There's the Rhinox. There's a lot of different Rhinox. There's, I don't remember any of these. The big chicken is the one that's in the first level and it's just like kind of like running uh, running away from, from the Rhinox. And then you have to help it. There's Bartholomew. 
This is the guy from the... Um, he's on like a smartphone or something. To help bring some characters to Bartholomew, we gave him oversized and tight sneakers and a phone. He thinks he's too cool for school. <laughs> that, fits him that fits him pretty well, to be honest. So Bartholomew is the guy who loses his ball uh, and is the one who asks you to go uh, fight uh, the other Yeti dude in the boxing minigame. You lost! Big brother you are! There we go, the fireflies. I love these dudes. They, they're the ones who from the Spooky Swamp. I love the music from Spooky Swamp. Dude, they, they, they say like those poems. Aiku, aikus, right? I think that's what you call it. Baby dragons! Oh, look at them! I don't actually know most of the designs for the baby dragons they used on the Slayer game. The world of Spyro. Yeah, so that's the artisan's home world. That's where you begin. I've always, I always had a fascination as a kid for this place in specific. I think, like as a kid, I loved mazes and this look kind of like one. Oh man, Stone Hill. That's like most of the time the first level you play. There's Town Square, Arc Hollow. Yes, with the library. Sunny Flight. So Sunny Flight is the first speedway. This is the one that you unlock by jumping on the little platforms. Toasty, yeah. Toasty is like the boss level, so it's a pretty short one. There's Peacekeepers. Night Flight. That's the speedway from Peacekeepers. Look at all this art, man. That's so cool. And this is where you fight Dr. Champ. Magic Crafters World. See, this, I love this place so much because it's very magical. Like, like the name says, it's very like, very fantastic and everything. The high caves. These were nice. I, I like the high caves. The high caves might be one of my favorite levels from, from Magic Crafters. Look at this. I love crystals very much. And this uh, speedway was probably one of my favorites because of that, there's crystals just sprouting out of everywhere. And Magic Craft is a lot like that. So I really like it. It's called Crystal Flight, and I guess that's why it's, there's so many crystals. <laughs> it's really cool. There's the Beast Makers, right? The Beast Makers, this one, I remember now. So the Beast Makers is where the Tree Tops world is, and it's like a very swampish zone. Terrace Village, this is the first level. Misty Bog. Ah, uh, this one, this is this is the level where it's like those, like, trees that eat you. As a kid, I ate it, I was kind of scared of those for some reason. <laughs> but that's also where you find Booba. Booba is in Misty Bog, is, is towards the end. So this is Tree Tops. Tree Tops might be my favorite level in uh, Beast Makers, mostly because of the little, like super charge, little challenge thing to get to, to that super far away island with the uh, with the dragon statue that you have to free up. And as a kid, like that was super challenging. It was so hard. But I'm kind of curious to see how if that challenge holds up at the Dreamweavers. The Dreamweavers, I have a very specific imagery, like memories of this one, because there was all, there was also, there was always these, these NPCs, these enemies that would uh, constantly like shift in size. And so at one point you had to grab this gun thing that would like reduce their size so you could pass through and stuff like that. Nasty's world. Yeah, you had the dragon heads and the last one was the Nasty's was Nasty Norik's uh, vault or something, and had a bunch of like gems you could collect. And that's how you 100% of the game. North Cove, that's with the barrels. Twilight Harbor, I don't actually remember. Nasty Nork is where you fight him. Nasty's loot, that's what it's called. You have like Nasty's Nork right there. Uh, and you have like spiral posters and everything. That's so neat. Oh man. I, I really like Nasty's loot. Cause it's like, you have to do a certain amount of things to unlock it. Dragon Shores! Dragon Shores is awesome, holy shit. I have, I, I recall the, um, like the very first cutscene from Spyro 2, where it goes like, where he goes like, is this rain ever gonna stop? I forgot what the sound looks like. And it's really cute. And then he goes like, we should go Dragon Shores. And it's cute. Summer Forest. I love this zone so much. It's so pretty, like this little forest you get at the beginning. You have the rivers and waterfalls and the music is beautiful. There's Glimmer. Yeah, Glimmer is where you get those little gem cutters and where you find the first letters. It's like a new gimmick they introduced to the game in the third one. Glimmer is a really nice world because it also has like all these this crystals and I remember the mini games where you had to fly and fire the crystals to light them up. There's Colossus. Colossus was awesome. At the beginning you had like this little, uh, this like head statue here on the, on the lake and you had to like uh, feed, it, feed it fish, but you had to be like the right colors. You couldn't feed them red fish because you wouldn't like it. That's the only way you could progress. And the level is really cool. Yeah, Urukos, that's what, uh, this was, this is the one I'm t I was talking about. We like the power balls and everything that you had to, to get to like unlock the doors and everything. Aquaria Towers. Right, you had like a bunch of, I, I was never very fond of the water levels to be perfectly honest. But I do have nice memories of this one. You had like the, um, you had to like rock, uh, ride the, the little submarine 
and shoot rockets at things. This art looks beautiful. I love the colors. Crush's dungeon, so this is where you fight Crush. Ocean Speedway. And in Spyro 2, they introduced like new characters like Hunter, for instance. And in some speedways, you could actually fight him hiding. And it was like secret challenges for you to get like skill points. It was really cool. So Autumn Plains, not Autumn Forest, but Autumn Plains. And Autumn Plains, in the inside of this little building, there's like a crack, a crack wall. If you r run against it, uh, if you break it, there's a, a whirlwind. It takes you way up high and then like you start hearing wind. And then it takes you to like a floating island or a tower of sorts where you get like new stuff. And like, that's such such an imprinted memory in my mind. Scale is Badlands, the one with the dinosaurs. Man, this level, super hard one too, at least back then. Crystal Glacier, this looks gorgeous. Breeze Harbor, this is the one where you have the troll ball and the trolley spiral. It's really cool. I, I love that. I love those, those mini games with the roller coaster sort of things though. Like as hard as they were, as hard as I could get, it was really cool. Magma Cone is so cool. Okay, so the song for Magma Cone always sounded super weird to me, in a good way. And like, there's at one point there's a voice of the guy singing, it just sounds like those like, oh no, oh no. And it's really funny. <laughs> but Magma Cone was cool, especially when you got to this part near the end, where there's this volcano thing, and you have to climb the ladders and there's like rocks falling on from the top. And I remember like at the at the end of like each Spyro, Spyro's to level, at the end of it, there's like this little funny cut scene uh, with an interaction between the inhabitants of that level. And I remember from Magna, for Magma Cone, it's just these guys, they're like having fun and one of them just kicks the other into a lava pit. Like it literally kills him. That's so, I was so creeped out by that as a kid. Winter Tundra. This is hands down my favorite homework from Spyro 2. Uh, the music is awesome. And I remember specifically, like the whole part with the ice and it was like this hidden cave. If you fly towards the right here, there's like a hidden entrance to a cave uh, behind a wall. And I remember specifically uh, right here is the door to where you go to battle Ripto. I was super scared of that as a kid because when you when a door opens and you go through it, it's like this long hallway that gets darker and darker as you go, and then like it gets super and then it gets it just goes pitch black and and it's like the transition to the boss level, and to me it's just the gradual turning black thing was so scary. I was also really scared of the dark as a kid, so there's that. This is also the world where you learn how to head stomp, which was really cool. You could break the rocks, but this wall here to the right, if you fly over it from here. Then you'll find like you'll fall into this lake and then you go you dive into it and it takes you to the to a cave down here and it's really cool this is the door where you go through to go to ripto robotica farms is where you have the little bees flying around and you have the robots and you have these little supercharged challenges i love this level so much so very much there's metropolis with the the other robots they're all like in suits and everything cool level as well, but I prefer Robotica Farms. I remember specifically, in fact, with Robotica Farms, you, you could like kind of bypass certain zones in the supercharge area, and then you had to break stuff. I don't know, I have such nostalgic memories for that, Jesus Christ. I feel so nostalgic about this game, about these games. I love them so much. There's Ripto's Arena, this is where you fight Ripto. I remember like, after, there's like two stages to the boss fight. So on the second one, the whole floor just breaks, just like, bursts into lava. And then you start flying with the power up and, and Ripto flies on a pterodactyl of sorts. And then you have to like kind of like f shoot fireballs at him. It's really cool. Dragon Shores! This is probably the best part of the game. So if you unlock uh, sufficient gems, I guess, I don't actually remember very much, very well, you get to go to Dragon Shores. And it's um, an amusement park, essentially, where you have several mini games and it's really cool. I have such fond memories of these. Spyro Hero of the Dragon, let's start with the third game now. Molten Crater, this fucking level, man with the little guys, the white guys, where their mouths are always open. This is also where you play Sergeant Bird for the first time. She'll help, this is where you first unlock her and and play as her, this is a cool level. Buzz's Dungeon is where you fight Buzz. Midday Gardens, I like Midday Gardens, because Midday Gardens is a spooky swamp, and Spooky Swamp is one of my favorite levels. This is the one with the uh, little haikus. Spooky Swamp, there it is, yay! I love Spooky Swamp. It's so cool. Evening Lake, Frozen Altars. This is where you fight. This is where you get the mini game with the boxing. And I love the song for Frozen Altars. It's so nice. Oh my god! Just looking at this green water, this hard if you go in it. And I remember as a kid, my dad would go like, "Oh, if you go, if you go into green water, you'll get a bonus." And so I would believe him, and then I would get hurt, and they would laugh <laughs> their asses off. And at the time, I was like, I didn't know. 
<laughs> and it was really funny. But in Lost Planet, there's also a challenge where oh, one thing I loved about Spyro 3 was the skating uh, challenges. There was so much fun. Just the skating challenges and the, the, the races with the, the hoverboards. And Floss Fleet, I know, has uh, one of those races. And it was really, really cool. Mina Mountain. Mina Mountain is, again, hands down, <laughs> my favorite homeworld uh, in Spyro 3. Mina Mountain has a cool ass song. It goes like, doo doot, doo doot, doo doot. And it has little lizards running around. It's really cute. And they're the ones who give you like butterflies. Um, I love, I love this place. I absolutely love this place. And this is also an area where you unlock the bonus home world, uh, which is pretty much the equivalent of Dragon Shores for the third game. Haunted Tomb, I love this level. I thought it was pretty creepy, the whole thing with the, um, the mummies coming out of the tombs and stuff. It has, and it had a mini game where you had to like shoot cannonballs and uh, at other stuff. Like you, you rode this car and you had to shoot other cars and stuff. It was nice. Dino Mines was pretty damn cool. Also nice play on words with the name. Dino Mines, Dynamite, because there's Dynamite. And there's like the dinosaurs, T-Rexes, who use their mouths to throw dynamite at you. This was a cool level. And then there's like a, a mini game as Agent 9, I think, in this one, if I'm not wrong, where you have to like shoot. It's like a first person shooter. You have to shoot like cowboys. You know, it's that kind of game, like inspired on those classical ones. Agent 9's lab, that's where you unlock him. Sorcerer's Lair, this is where you fight the sorcerers. We're getting to the end now. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to cut a lot from this video, to be honest. Yeah, this is where this is where she sits on the throne. This is where you see her most of the time on the cutscenes. Credit paintings. Oh man, look at him. It's so cute. I love this. Just, oh man. Look, it's so cute. Sparrow is something absolutely magical. I, I absolutely adore it. Look at this. You get like to see several different interactions between Sparrow and the Elder Dragons. That's so cute. Because in the game, you don't actually, you never really get to see that a lot. Like in the first game, you get to see a, lot, a bit of Spider's personality, but all the interaction you have is just talking to the dragons. You don't actually see like kind of stuff they do together. And here you, you get to see like a little bit more of it. That's so cute. Look at this. That is absolutely adorable. Oh, I love this guy's color palette. He's just playing with the, uh, well, the books. He's just playing with the book. This is part so, this is so cute. Oh, look at him in this phone. It has a unicorn smoothie, that's funny. One of the coolest things, I wish they still did this, but the PlayStation 1 times were so good because of this. The PlayStation 1 times had like the little manuals that were like super creative and not boring like most of them are now, if they even bring a manual at all. But one of the things I really loved about the Spyro 2 manual was that you had like Spyro on the backside with sunglasses, sitting on a beach chair, drinking on those laminate thingamajigs and it was super cool. And I remember specifically there was like the fluorescent, transparent yellow uh, memory card on it as well. There's Nastor. Oh, it's cool. Look at it, it's so cute. <laughs> There's a little tongue sticking out. <laughs> oh my God, I love this. Look at him. Oh my God, I love this so much. So much creativity and... <laughs> so cute. <laughs> I need to show you this up close. Look at his face. It's just like going super metal or something. And then this, <laughs> this dragon is just like, whoa, chill there, buddy. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh, he's really sad here. Oh, he, he made this thing out of clay. Look at his paws. They have clay on them. And then it broke and he's sad. Oh, it's so cute. Poor Spyro. There's this one with a, with a clock. Oh man. Oh, there's a whole team. Wait, I have this t-shirt. But look, there's like, I guess his entire team. It's probably says here. Acknowledgements. By the end, it was really hard to let the project go. I kept drawing dragons for a while. Occasionally, I'll continue to draw dragons and characters from the game just for fun. Hell yeah, I'm glad you do. An amazing job. I love this art so much. And there we go. That's the end. Whoa, Spyro. <laughs> it's more a menacing take on him here. Absolutely beautiful. Look at this, yeah. And the back side of it, which I still haven't shown you. With Bianca, Laura, Hunter, uh, Sheila, Agent 9, Sergeant Bird, Moneybags, Crush and Gulp, I think those were names. And there you have it! There's the, the art of Spyro Reunited Trilogy. Absolutely amazing. Man, I loved this book and I can't wait to actually look into it on my own time and uh, just read everything um, that they wrote in it because it, this has been so interesting to me like just looking at all the art all the concepts and the names of the dragons that i never actually memorized but i want to have everything memorized 
and just like reading their personalities and everything and their each like challenges and how they came up with stuff that there's so many so much things written in there i'm so so excited oh my god i'm so glad i got it i was like kind of wondering if i should because of the price it was like 40 bucks if you guys want to get it by the way i'll leave a, a link down in the description below uh i, I got it from amazon um so yeah you can you can get it there if you want and it's actually a lot bigger than I thought it was. Like it, it looked a lot smaller from like pictures I had seen online, but it's actually a lot bigger. But man, I surely do not regret. It. I am so happy that I got it, and it's just gonna go to my already full of spider stuff shelf. I'm not even sure if I have space in there. I'll probably have to put it somewhere else. But I'm super happy to have this new addition to my spider collection. Hell yeah! I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm sorry the video is so so long. Right now it's at one hour and six minutes and I'm gonna try to cut it down. I'm probably gonna cut down some parts where I don't really talk or just skim through the pages without really much excitement or something. I don't know. Let's not make it any longer. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was really important to me and I'm really, I was really happy. I was very, very excited to make this video and I hope you guys enjoyed just looking at this book with me because I had a blast. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and leave a like if you'd like. Comment down uh, below anything you want. Tell me about your experiences with Spire if you've ever had one. And if you like it and what your favorite stuff are, what your favorite part of the book was, what your favorite dragon characters are, or villains or heroes or worlds or what nostalgic memories you have of Spyro. Because man, like, Spyro marked my childhood. It still marks me today. It's like absolutely my favorite series ever. I love so much, so much, so much, so much. I'm so, I was super happy with the Ran Out trilogy it came out. In fact, I have a reaction to the reveal trailer that I watched for the first time on my channel as well. I'll link that in the description uh, too. And with Crash 4, about it's about time coming out. I am very hopeful and I'm pretty sure they're gonna make an entire new Spyro game as well. Uh, following the classic trilogy as well. So I'm so, so pumped for that and I hope it happens. But anyway, let's not make the video any longer. Thank you guys again. I'll see you next time and goodbye.